Go Home, Mrs. Beekman, by Anne Reddish Stampler, illustrations by Marcia Gray Carrington. On the first day of school, Emily Beekman built a fort out of her mattress, three slinkies, a bicycle chain, and a set of wooden spoons. I'm not coming out, she told her mother. Not in a million gazillion years. But Emily, Mrs. Beekman said, you're going to miss the first day of school. I am not coming out, yelled Emily. Not even if you give me a big purple hat. But school has clay and paint and colored paper, Mrs. Beekman coaxed. School has a high jungle gym and children to be friends with you. Not even if you get me a dog, yelled Emily. Not even if you get me a dog and a bird and a red hula hoop. I won't stay at school without you. Well, Mrs. Beekman said, maybe I could stay for just a little. Forever, bellowed Emily. Every day forever. All right, declared Mrs. Beekman. I'll stay. Do you promise? Asked Emily, poking the tip of her nose out of the fort. I promise, vowed Mrs. Beekman. And a promise is a promise. I'll stay at school for a million gazillion years with my Emily right on my lap. And even though Emily wasn't exactly sure that she wanted to sit on her mother's lap for all that many years, she crawled out of her fort, dressed in her special pink jacket with the red sequined sombreros, and walked with her mother to school. When they got to the gate, she held onto her mother's hand as tight as she could. Soon, Emily noticed that school had some pretty nice stuff. There was an art table covered with clay and paint and colored paper, and a big jungle gym. Emily would not have minded playing with some of that nice stuff, but she had a little problem getting up. Finally, a friendly person named Teacher Sue pinned a yellow paper rocket onto Emily's dress. Who else has a yellow rocket? Teacher Sue asked. Emily looked all over until she found a boy and a girl with yellow rockets. Emily was scared they wouldn't want to play with her, but the girl said, Look it, another rocket! And she took Emily's hand. Her name is Isabel, and the boy was Frankie. Want to be a space monster with us? Frankie asked. Emily was afraid that she might not like playing space monsters. But Isabel said, look it, let's make space monster costumes. Soon Emily discovered that space monsters was not a bad game. Isabel shared her crayons and Frankie could wiggle his ears and cross his eyes at the same time. At circle time, Emily didn't know if there was room for her in the circle. But two girls moved over to make space for her. She didn't know if she would be able to learn the new song, but it turned out she could. She even whispered the words to a red-headed boy who had forgotten them. That was when Teacher Sue thanked her for being so helpful. Emily kind of liked school so far. Finally, at snack time, Teacher Sue said it was time for the grown-ups to leave. Teachers know how to take good care of children, she told Emily. We'll learn new things, and at 3 o'clock, your mother will come back to get you. Emily thought this over. She liked being at school a lot better than she had expected, and she felt nice and safe with Teacher Sue. But when the goodbye hugs were finished, Emily did not see her mother walking to the gate. Then she heard a familiar voice. Over here, hissed the voice. Emily tiptoed to the cubby room. Mrs. Beekman was grabbing a jumble of sweaters and coats. Put these on me, she urged. Hurry. Mrs. Beekman jumped on one foot and stuck out her arms. Look, I'm a coat rack. She said, a coat rack could stay here forever. I don't think this is going to work, observed Emily. A promise is a promise, replied Mrs. Beekman in a muffled voice. When Emily trotted outside to play with Isabel and Frankie, a cold breeze was rustling the leaves of the elm tree. Brr, shivered Teacher Sue. I'll go get your sweaters. I'm not cold, cried Emily, but it was too late. Mrs. Beekman, gasped Teacher Sue. How nice of you to help us with the coats. But it is time for the mothers to go home. Bye, Mommy, called Emily as Teacher Sue walked Mrs. Beekman to the gate. I kind of like school. But just before cleanup time, Teacher Sue noticed a peculiar sight. Mrs. Beekman, she said, gazing down over the top of the fence. As much as we love having your nose and left eye visit us at school, the children really are ready for their parents to go home. Emily will be right here when you come back at 3 o'clock. That night at home, Emily and her mother read a big book about dinosaurs. They had a wonderful time, and Emily hoped, just a little, that her mother would forget about the promise. But when Emily was ready for school the next morning, she noticed a big purple thingamajiggy by the front door. I'm a big purple hat, cried Mrs. Beekman. You can wear me to school. You're not a hat, 
protested Emily. You're my mommy. A hat could stay at school all year, insisted Mrs. Beekman, and they trudged to school. Emily wanted to play with Isabel and the other kids, but the purple hat with the purple hat, she couldn't fit into the playhouse or j- climb the jungle gym or put on dress-up clothes. That is a very unusual hat, observed Teacher Sue at snack time. Wouldn't it be fun to share something that big for share day tomorrow? But for now, what if I help you put your hat into the cubby room so you can move around? Emily quickly agreed. But when Teacher Sue tried to pull the hat off Emily's head, they all tipped over. It's time for you to go home, Mrs. Beekman, said Teacher Sue. Bye, Mommy, chirped Emily. All right for now, humphed Mrs. Beekman, but a promise is a promise. And with that, she disappeared through the front gate where she stood like a purple statue until three o'clock. That night at home, Emily and her mother made a rhubarb pie. They had a wonderful time, and Emily hoped quite a lot that her mother would forget about staying at school. But the next morning, there was a big green dog in the kitchen. Mommy, yelled Emily, what are you doing in that dog suit? I'm a dog, cried Mrs. Beekman. You can share me for share day. But I don't want to share a mommy in a dog suit, protested Emily. But Mrs. Beekman just waggled her scruffy green tail and repeated, A promise is a promise. What an unusual dog, remarked Teacher Sue when she noticed that Emily was stuck on the green dog's lap. Emily, come play with me, called Isabel from up on the jungle gym. I have to sit on my dog, said Emily sadly. Finally, Teacher Sue put her arm around Emily's shoulders. We usually don't bring live pets to share day, she said. Teacher Sue patted the big green dog on the head. Then she led the dog to the the gate. Emily is really, truly happy here at school, she said. It is time for you to go home, Mrs. Beekman. The rest of the morning was very peaceful until a gust of wind blew the sand into the air in a great cloud. Emily heard the sound of a hundred rumbling thunderclaps. A black shadow fell over the playground. When the children looked up, they saw a huge helicopter. And dangling from that helicopter, they saw a yellow bird as big as a person. In fact, I'm a big yellow bird, yelled Mrs. Beekman. And to prove it, she flapped her big wings. That plane is too loud, shrieked Teacher Sue. Please fly away right now. Emily is happy. Go home, Mrs. Beekman. But I promise to stay for a million gazillion years, called the yellow bird. Fortunately, the pilot could see that he was making a nuisance of himself, and finally he flew away. That night at home, Mrs. Beekman was too tired to have fun with Emily. Emily just sat and tried to figure out how to convince her mother to stop coming to school. But the next morning, Mrs. Beekman was wearing red tights, a red leotard, red gloves, and a woolly red ski hat. She had curled herself into a big red O. I'm a big red hula hoop, cried Mrs. Beekman. You can roll me to school. Emily lay down on the kitchen floor so her face was right next to Mrs. Beekman's upside-down head. Mommy, she said, I want to be at school by myself. By yourself? repeated Mrs. Beekman. But I thought you wanted me to stay with you at school forever. I like being at school by myself, said Emily. You really like school? asked Mrs. Beekman, pulling off her ski hat. I love school, said Emily. I made new friends, and Teacher Sue is nice. But Mommy, school is for children. We can have a really good time together at home when school's over. Mrs. Beekman uncoiled from her big red O. She pulled off her gloves, and together, hand in hand, they walked to school. At the gate, Emily and her mother gave each other a big, warm hug. Have a wonderful day, called Mrs. Beekman. I promise, Emily called back, and a promise is a promise.